H2O2 cross flow turbine versus nuclear power. There are not many ideas in the world that represent the future of humanity. This is an idea that is being born once in 100 years. The fact that the appearance of such a brilliant idea is rarer than Halley's comet appearance speaks of its uniqueness and originality. H2O2 cross flow turbine versus nuclear power. Don Quixote was written in 1605. Long gone are the days of fighting with windmills. For those who do not know it's the 21st century. Phase 1. The struggle with human vanity. Flora and fauna of the sea is always moving. Fish, seaweed. This movement is possible because they are lighter from environment in which they are parts of H2O2 cross-flow turbines can be hollow. That is, can be filled with, air, hydrogen. By this we get, that the turbine behaves much like seaweed, since the fins are filled with gas, they are lighter than water. Remember, that water has weight, energy. Every square meter of water that moves, has a weight energy, of approximately one ton. If the water is moving at a speed of one meter per second, the fins will move at that speed too. Take for instance that the size of fins is two times three meters. Means that their surface is six square meters. Hydropower acting on them, is six tons. At a speed of one meter per second, at an angle of 90 degrees, that is 6 tons of pure energy. Energy in motion. But, thanks to its design, the fins are not on the way of hydropower. They are transferring hydropower energy of 6 tons to the base. No devices, known to man, can take advantage of approximate amount of energy from water movement. That is why our technology is revolutionary. Because it uses, energy at every moment and not accumulated energy or its parts. Why our technology is so much better. We will try to explain in the simplest possible way. Left and right we have two hands, energy passes below. Left hand is the devices that are currently in use and how they use energy. Right hand is the H2O2 cross flow turbine and the way she uses energy. A man, with his devices, wants to stop the energy, and accumulates it, and then use it. But you cannot stop energy, that's ridiculous. There is no point in that. It's like a that you take leaky bucket, and want to drain the well. Today's devices use fins that are angled regard to the movement of energy. To us it is realistic to say, no matter how much energy you kept but how much you missed so they do not capture the energy as you say, but let through. Since they are at an angle. The principle of the H2O2 cross flow turbine is stunning. She taps the energy, converts it into the rotational motion and it continues to move with this energy, but with same power and energy. Like this hand. In moment, it captures the energy, but the energy is stronger and hand gets worn by it. Phase 2. We invest our mind resources to develop technology. The force acting on the fins spins the turbine. You ask, but what if water changed the direction of movement? Direction of the water movement does not affect the direction of the H2O2 cross flow turbine rotation. Position limiter of fins conditions in which the direction fins rotate direction of the energy movement that drives these two turbines is opposite to each other. But the turbine's base is rotating in same direction. The two fins are taking the thrust of 6 tons. It is the sum of 12 tons, 12 tons of thrust. This is the amount that is obtained only from the two turbines, whose fins have an area 2 times 3 meters. Do you know a device that can provide such a thrust? A thrust of 12 tons. Phase 3. Dispelling Myths My nephew is playing with windmills. 
but I like to think of myself that I'm more adult than he. This video was made with a good reason. World's first floating nuclear power plant to begin operating in Russia in 2016. H2O2 cross flow turbine versus nuclear power. We will not for someone else's idea to say that is bad. If for something you want to say it's bad, first show a better solution. Water power is viewed as something that could potentially be the solution to powering everything we use on planet Earth. We can't live without water and three quarters of our planet is covered with it. And, water contains a tremendous amount of potential energy if it can be utilized correctly. So, how do we humans extract energy from water? People say. Well, water has weight, and can be very powerful, when enough of it, is pushing, pulling something. They are partly right, not to say partly mistaken. Did you pay attention to the following words? When enough of it. In this one word is secret of human failure. To the people, one of most important words is, enough. Enough to eat, enough to drink, enough to sleep, enough gasoline. Enough, enough, enough. H2O2 cross flow turbine versus nuclear power. Phase 4. Vision and solution. A summary of Ponstillian's voyage log on April 22nd, 1513, noted. A current such that, although they had great wind, they could not proceed forward, but backward and it seems that they were proceeding well, at the end it was known that the current was more powerful than the wind. Despite the aerodynamics of the hull, and sails are filled with wind, the ships went backward. This is proof of the strength of the water flow, do you remember the fact? How much of energy exploit our H2O2 cross flow turbine? We take the example of a single stream of water, Gulf Stream. As a consequence, the resulting Gulf Stream is a strong ocean current. It transports water at a rate of 30 million cubic meters per second through the Florida Straits. As it passes south of Newfoundland, this rate increases to 150 million cubic meters per second. The Gulf Stream is typically 100 kilometers wide, and 800 meters to 1,200 meters deep. The current velocity is fastest near the surface, with the maximum speed typically about 2.5 meters per second. For example, we take an amount of 75 million cubic meters of water per second. If we use the 10,000th part of that energy, repeat 10,000th part. We get the thrust of 7,500 ton. 7,500 ton. To know what is the amount of thrust 7,500 tons, here is comparison. Gold medal for the most powerful rocket ever, goes to Soviet N1, 11A52. With a thrust of over 44,000 kilonewtons, 4,500 tons, which was created 30 engines NK15. 11 D 51. It was, and still is, the most powerful rocket ever launched. But that thrust, the rocket achieved only for a few moments. H2O2 cross flow turbine exploit thrust, every m moment, second, minute, hour, day, year, century. Continuous.